Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy, Mickey Fenty, a.k.a. Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support my brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And that's the place where you can get all your drip on original styles. Okay, today's episode, this episode right here, I'm covering bad parenting. And the reason why it's so important in these times to highlight these types of conversations, because there's a lot of people out here giving misinformation to people and people are being raised on misinformation and what does that lead to? It leads to a long life of misled people not knowing where to go or who to turn to or what even the right information is. So today we're looking at bad parenting and how bad parenting can hurt the, not only the kids but everybody around them. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Narcissistic parents set their children up for failure. When you are raised by narcissistic parents, or parents in my case, because both my parents were narcissists, you are taught from a very young age that your thoughts, feelings, emotions, and boundaries are invalid and that the most important thing for you to do is to keep the narcissist happy. In my situation, my father showed more narcissistic traits than my mother, but eventually due to the fact that she was just a victim for so long and she never got help, she started picking up the narcissistic traits as well. And what people don't talk about is the fact that being raised by narcissists and witnessing that type of abuse from the time that you are a child to the time that I'm 27 years old, you know what I'm saying? And from the time that I was a child, it was literally embedded in my mind that, you know, don't rock the boat, don't upset the narcissist, whatever you do, don't piss dad off. Um, even if that includes, you know, speaking up for your own self in situations that you feel are unfair. So when you are raised to think like that and act like that, and you're taught from a very young age that your experiences and your thoughts and your boundaries and your traumas do not matter. The only thing that matters is keeping the narcissist happy so that there's peace in the house. Nobody talks about how that fucks you up mentally um, growing up and as an adult. Nobody talks about the fact that when you are raised by narcissists, you have zero conflict resolution skills. So for a long time, when people would disagree with me or when they would say something that I didn't like, my first instinct was violence or just to cuss them out when that's not even how you handle a situation where somebody is saying something that you don't want to hear. Nobody talks about how when you are raised by narcissists from a very young age, you are gaslit and you're told that your thoughts your feelings your opinions they don't matter or they're just not real and so you learn to ignore your intuition and your gut feeling because you don't even think that what you're feeling is real and accurate nobody talks about how when you are raised by a narcissist and you know most times narcissists are also physically abusive guys when you are raised by a narcissist people don't understand how hard dating can be because you have been taught from a very young age again that your boundaries are invalid your thoughts are invalid your feelings are invalid so when you go throughout your life and you're choosing partners you're not even picking up on red flags or shit that should be a red flag because to you this type of horrible treatment is just fucking normal it's normal like why would i be shook that a guy put his hands on me when that's what my dad used to do you know what i'm saying why would i think that it's a red flag for a guy to yell at me when that's how i'm used to my dad talking to me or talking to my mom you know what i'm saying or my sister nobody talks about how when you're raised by a narcissist how hard dating or even having friends is because not only have you been gaslit to the point where you don't trust yourself, but you're also hyper vigilant. You're super paranoid of everybody and their intentions. And so you can't even 
it feels like you can't even have a peaceful, loving, trusting relationship with another person because you're too scared, literally too scared to trust them or you always think somebody's out to get you or it's just always paranoia. Even when that person hasn't given you any reason not to trust them, you just you're you're hyper vigilant and you're paranoid and you just can't trust anybody. Nobody talks about the imposter syndrome and how you start to diminish your accomplishments or you don't even think that you've made any accomplishments because you're used to a narcissist um, or a narcissistic parent telling you constantly that what you have done or what you're doing is not enough. So that can definitely translate over into your life as an adult. Like you'll start thinking that little shit that you have done isn't even important the whole time you're out here moving and shaking and building a life for yourself and you're not even celebrating yourself because you haven't been taught to nobody talks about how when you were raised by a narcissist how you're literally forced to walk on eggshells for so long you just you don't want to do anything to piss the narcissistic parent off because you know if you do that it's going to be hell for the rest of the day nobody talks about how being raised like that causes you to act like that with other people and you'll notice over time you begin to shrink yourself smaller and smaller and smaller because you don't want to disturb the peace you don't want to rock the boat because that's the number one thing in a narcissistic household is don't piss the narcissist off nobody talks about how it takes you forever to start having boundaries and to start sticking up for yourself and to start standing up for yourself because you've never seen it done narcissists don't stand up for their victims in narcissistic parents don't stand up for their children so when you come from a household where you grow up and shame and guilt and fear is just fed to you on a daily basis you become a shameful guilty type of person and you and then if your parents were extra heinous with it like mine was they will use religion and christianity to back up their antics and when parents do stuff like this nobody talks about how that fucks up the child's relationship with god i'm 27 years old i have a lot of shit to learn i have a lot of shit to unlearn but one thing that I do know for an absolute and complete fact is that when I have my kids, I just I really want to make sure that I am in the best position holistically, like not just financially, not just, um, you know what I'm saying? As far as like my career and everything like that, I want to be a whole person before I decide to bring another child into this world. Because what I do not want to do is what my parents did to me, which is raise a child based off of the traumas that I have had and the shit that I have had to go through and pass that shit on to my child who does not deserve it. I refuse to set my future kids up for failure because I didn't want to heal and learn and grow. And I just feel like when you don't do that, you do your child a disservice because you're not even raising them when you're the best version of yourself and some people don't even realize how important this is some people do realize how important this is and they still don't want to take the necessary steps to heal healing is not easy trust me like i understand that but when you have a child bro you really have to be careful what type of messages you are programming into that child's mind. you have to be careful what type of shit you're programming into your child's mind because when they go out into the world and they're on their own, it's going to reflect. Like, everything that you taught them and programmed into their mind is going to reflect. And right now, I'm 27. I'm in a good headspace. You know what I'm saying? Shit is good for me right now. But I had to go through a lot of shit. And a lot of the shit that I went through could have been avoided if my parents were actually, you know what I'm saying, were not narcissistic and they actually prepared me to be a citizen in this world instead of being a pawn for them. I had to learn a lot of shit. I had to learn how to stop people pleasing. I had to learn conflict resolution. I had to learn how to stop being so hyper vigilant and paranoid. I'm still working on that to this day. But I really just want to put this message out there for anybody having kids, thinking about having kids. Like, please make sure you get 
your mind right before you bring a child into this world because it's really unfair to bring a child into this world knowing that you aren't even the best version of yourself because in the long run everybody suffers especially the child why do y'all have an excessive amount of children and then expect the oldest to take care of them kids and when i say excessive i mean an amount that you can't handle an amount where you have to rely on that oldest child the second oldest child whoever's the oldest in the house at the time i'm not gonna get too specific but recently a child missed out on a great opportunity because the parents basically need them to watch the children underneath them while they're not there and it's a lot of them don't come on here talking about well my mama had me watching my siblings look at me look at you repeating the cycle understand the common things you know watch your siblings until i get home cooking breakfast lunches dinner washing clothes folding clothes making sure they're bathed making sure they're in bed on time i've met several children that are in the ninth and eighth grade who want jobs y'all jobs in the eighth and ninth grade so that they can get out of these environments i'll be ruining y'all kids before they even got a chance to mess up in their own ways y'all be pushing them into everything y'all don't really want them to do stop putting that responsibility on them children you decided to have four five six seven eight nine ten kids it is not on the oldest hey babe so i'm sitting in my car because i just experienced something that I'm really disturbed about and I, I need to just tell somebody about it. So I'm in Target and I'm walking towards the TVs to go look at TVs. So by the TVs, it's the toy section. So, you know, that's generally where people take their kids. So I'm walking that way and towards me is walking a kid and his dad, a little boy. As I'm walking past, the boy looks at me and says, cool shirt that's literally all he says cool shirt and before I can even say thank you the dad snatches the boy up just like this snatches his shirt up like this pulls him pretty much off his feet and says so what you want to be a punk you want you complimenting you complimenting men. You supposed to compliment girls. You don't don't never let me hear you compliment no dude again. We have to do better. We have to do better. When I'm telling you, it. It made me immediately feel like if you was going to do him like that, I wish he wouldn't even complimented my shirt. Even though I solely believe in kids being able to express themselves. Kids should be able to express themselves. That boy, if I was to guess, it's a shame. he's probably no more than between seven and 10 years old and 10 is the max i don't think he was 10. my thing is what was the point what was the point of you doing that to a little boy in result of him saying something was cool that's what little boys do they they say things are cool when they see something that they find cool that's what they do adults do that i do that you probably do that what was the point in that to traumatize him? To make him fearful of you? Like, what was the point? He got a video going around of a young woman who's been a parent since she was 15 years old. She got two children, one 11, one 3. She's recording the whole process of her giving her children back to the state, putting them in foster care. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm trying to get them to the dad because I'm not going to lie y'all. I'm over it. I do everything by my fucking self and I've been doing it for years since I was 15. I'm literally 27. I'm about to be 28 this year. And like these niggas don't help. They don't send no Christmas cards, birthday gifts, presents, no, literally not a damn thing. Crazy? And as well, okay, my oldest son is 11 and my daughter's is about to be three. So you mean to tell me out of three years and out of 11 years, y'all lazy ass niggas still ain't come up yet? I'm, I've been doing it by myself since I was 15. I'm done. I'm over it. I'm in two different colleges. I'm working. Um, I'm over. I'm overwhelmed. I was just. It's, I'm done. They are into um, 
because they they do they like um because you know i told you we watch documentaries and stuff so they are into what? a lot of greek mythology um in like indian myths and folklore so i like greek mythology i'm pretty good at it so. yes um so some may if you have to try to open the yeah. light or something you know and i made sure i told them that earlier i, told, I made yeah. sure i told them that there's nothing wrong and they didn't do anything wrong and i don't want them to think that they're not enough because they're everything i ever wanted I'm coming back for them. I don't yeah. care. Y'all I'm don't telling blame you the kids. Respectfully from my mouth. Whatever hoops you guys throw at me, whatever with no matter how you guys try to spin it, I'm coming back for my kids and I am going to get my kids. So I blocked all my sisters, I blocked all my family because I don't like none of the bitches. I don't give about none of this. I'm cool. I cut my ties with family, I cut my ties obviously, unfortunately, with my kids. Um, I don't have a boyfriend, but yeah, I was and then again. I cut my ties with him. I'm you know what? If the dads didn't fucking care, why do I gotta care? Uh, and you know, it's sad because I didn't care. I obviously care. I love out of them. What? And I'm gonna come back for my babies and I'm gonna get them the fuck. She say the daddies don't help. She say the in-laws, the family members don't help. She been doing it on her own. She got two different jobs and she go to school, right? For about three to four minutes, she go on this long ass rant. How nobody there to help her with her dreams and they taking off and she just need to focus shit like that, right? So in my mind, I'm like, first of all, how you find time to have two jobs and go to school? That's a fact. Facts, facts. You got 11 year old and the three year old. I'm not saying you should just totally restrict your life, but it should be limited. <laughs> It should be limited because these kids take a larger investment than what you're willing to give. But that nobody never want to talk about that, right? We promote individualism and freedom amongst self so hard these days. Be solo and selfish, right? It's to the point it's affecting our kids. So you got this woman. She give her kids back to the state, and before she give her kids back to the state, she claims she gave. The baby fathers till five o'clock to come pick the children up or she was going to give them up. Right. She even told family and friends, hey, if you want to take the benefits of having my kids, you know, get the food stamps, put them on SSI, which is the highest form of negligence and abuse. Right. That's a fact. Facts, facts. After she solicit and auction her kids off to the highest bidder, which was the state. She claim after she get her shit together, she coming back for him. This hit me in the heart because not only was I in state custody, after I got adopted, I was given back to the state. So I done seen different forms of people claiming they don't have what it take to lead you in the right direction as a child, right? And that may be true, but why can't you understand how abusive this is? Why can't you understand how cold-hearted and destructive you're being towards these kids why can't you see that you could be on this woman's side all you want and you can say oh they ain't saying nothing to the daddies i'm saying something to her and the daddies i feel like y'all both laid down y'all both had this child y'all both are responsible for it in the story i pray for them kids mentally spiritually physically because you don't know what go on in these group homes in these emergency shelters in these respite homes in these adoption facilities you don't know what goes on but yet you feel it's the best resolution for these two children bruh it's ultimately your responsibility to see a kid through once you create them but who am i right i was laying next to these people i was watching these situations myself i was in those dcfs offices when these kids were being dropped off i saw the effects i know the effects and i know it hurt and i know it crushed them and that's cool. Your comment actually reminded me of the first time that I ever stood up to my mother. I was 20, still living at home, and one of my mother's favorite activities was starting an argument with me and then threatening to kick me out. So on this day, that's exactly what happened. She started an argument, threatened to kick me out. This time I said, fine, I'll go. And for some reason, me responding to her threatening to kick me out with I'll go pissed her the fuck off. So she starts grabbing my shit and starts throwing it outside in the pouring rain, mind you. Throws everything outside. She puts me out, locks the door. So I'm just 
sitting on my suitcase on the porch in the rain, texting and calling my boyfriend like crazy while he's at work so that he can know what just happened and come and get me. While I'm doing that, I hear the door unlock and I hear it open and she comes out and she's got her hand out like this. And she's like, and give me that phone too. Keep in mind, I was absolutely petrified of this woman. But at that point, I was just pissed the fuck off. I look at the phone, I look back up at her and I say, no. First time I ever said no to her in my life. She puts her hand on her hip and she's like, no. My heart is pounding, but I'm not backing down at this point. I'm looking at her and I'm like, no, you didn't buy this phone. So-and-so bought me this phone as a gift for my birthday. So-and-so was her ex-boyfriend. You can turn off the service because I know you pay the bill, but the phone itself you didn't buy, so I'm keeping it. Plus I need to call Jamel and tell him what happened so he can come and get me. I don't know what I expected to happen in that moment, but what I didn't expect to happen was for her to look at me and be like, okay and then turn around and go back inside. Eventually my boyfriend got his roommate to come and get me and like take me to their apartment. And it took her some weeks to actually turn that service off. But I look back at that moment and honestly, I pat myself on the back a lot because after years and years of this woman abusing me, treating me like absolute shit, I finally for once got the guts to be able to stand up to her and say, no, fuck you. Man, you try to confront a bad parent about their shitty parenting and their favorite line is, I did my best. Like, okay and it wasn't good enough okay i don't know where this whole i did my best mentality came from because people think they can say that and that just excuses all the shitty things they were doing like it's okay to understand that sometimes your best is not good enough sorry i know it hurts to hear it might sting a little bit but you know it'd be like that sometimes babe as a parent i mess up a lot i yell at my kids from time to time i lose my cool quite often i wouldn't be human if i didn't especially considering the fact that i'm a first generation gentle parent right like i do not come from a gentle household whatsoever and it gets exponentially worse as the generations go back but just because i'm setting out to give my kids a complete opposite childhood than i had myself doesn't mean that i don't sometimes slip back into my old ways and yell at my kids or emotionally react project lash out all of the things i still find myself gaslighting my kids from time to time saying you're fine it's not that big of a deal i would not be human if that was not part of my parenting experience there's actually a study called what is it called the good enough parent hold on let me look this up the good enough parent I can't find the exact article that I wanted to read from, but pretty much there's a theory called good enough parenting theory, where if you respond to your kids' needs most of the time, they will develop secure attachment. Don't quote me on this, but something like 30% of your kids' needs need to be met for them to have secure attachment. So what that tells me is the 50% of the world that doesn't have secure attachment, their parents were so lost in the sauce. Like the bar is literally in hell. I strive for 80-20. I feel like that just makes sense my head i feel like that applies to most things in life i strive to be on my a game with my kids 80 percent of the time 20 percent of the time is me fucking up and looking them dead ass in the eyes saying i should not have reacted like that i am so sorry for doing that i will try my best not to do that again it happened yesterday and even more embarrassingly in front of my husband my husband and i were in the middle of a conversation we were deep in conversation and my daughters do this thing where they mom me a million times in a row mom 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 and we have had several conversations about this hey honey when i'm in the middle of a conversation you can put your hand on me and just wait wait patiently for me to respond or look at you make eye contact with you i'm here i want to respond to you but unless it's urgent you don't need to be yelling mom in my face well after i had reminded my kid over and over and over again wait your turn wait your turn i'm almost done wait your turn wait your turn i eventually just snapped and said aliyah stop momming me and guess what that's what my mom used to tell me and my other three siblings every single time we'd start momming her is stop momming me and she immediately broke down and cried as i did when i was a child it's hard hearing the one person that you rely on for pretty much everything to tell you to stop asking them for what you need. I felt so bad in that moment. I quickly got out the few words that I needed to to my husband to finish my sentence. And then I scooped her up and I gave her a hug and I apologized. I said, I am so sorry that I just snapped at you like that. I should never raise my voice when I'm talking to you. No one should ever yell at you. I took responsibility for my emotions. Mommy is very frustrated. Mommy's very angry. I'm overstimulated. I've had a lot going on today and that is not your fault. I looked her in the eyes and asked her, what do you need? What is it that you need oh so badly? To know 
surprised she wanted a snack so I got her a snack and I asked her kindly next time I would really appreciate if you just put your hand on me and waited for me to respond to you we oftentimes say we need to exercise our patient's muscles and that's what I told her to do you need to exercise your patient's muscle when mom's in a conversation with someone you got to be a little more patient because there are two of you two kids and one mommy I think in any instance that you mess up and you yell at your kid you lose your cool it is more important to focus on how you repaired that rather than eating yourself alive telling yourself that you're such a bad mom I used to do that and it was really really hard to get through those days where I did mess up a lot whether I had a lot going on or I was overstimulated from the second I opened my eyes that day you need to understand that if you were a perfect parent it would limit your kids ability to build resilience if you were a perfect parent or if everything in the world was perfect for your kid they would not know how to stand up every single time they fell how to bounce back when things went wrong i almost feel like if i had perfect parents i would be filled with anxiety and this fear of failing and taking risks maybe even disappointment because the rest of the world isn't all that perfect and my parents are although we don't need to actively bully our children to prepare them for the harsh world i do think it's very realistic to set your kid up for the real world by being a real person with them i feel like you should definitely apologize when you do things that are wrong to your kid just like in any other relationship you would apologize when you were wrong when you hurt somebody we definitely don't need to be putting on a facade right we don't need to be playing perfect mom and I just think that that mindset social media oftentimes highlights that mindset I don't think that that's realistic attainable or even healthy story time on how I found out my dad was molesting my four-year-old daughter I'm not doing these for attention for clout for none of that if I can tell my story and help somebody else that's what I'm gonna do first thing I want to say is pay attention to your kids your girls your boys pay attention it was the smallest thing that brought everything to light. Something that I could have absolutely overlooked and I did not. Because I pay attention to my child. I look at everything. I pay attention to everything when it comes to her. I be paranoid and it comes from my own childhood trauma. But anyways, so my dad lived about two hours from us. I had just finished school and I was about to start my ex turn. My husband worked during the day and I needed somebody to watch my daughter while I did my ex turn because she wasn't in school at the time. So my husband drove two hours, picked my dad up, brought my dad back to our house. So I started my ex turn. Everything was going good. My y'all, I ain't never told nobody this, but I was already paranoid. Like, it was something. I was paranoid that whole week. It was like little small stuff that was being done that kind of had me uneasy. But, okay, so the first thing was one day my husband was about to drop me off at my ex turn. It was like 8 in the morning. My daughter was in our room because my dad was in her room so my baby was in the bed asleep my husband and i we were leaving the house and we were outside i want to say maybe 30 to 45 seconds because my husband when we got in the car he realized that he left something and he got up to go in the house and when he got to our bedroom door, my dad was at the door. Mind you, my baby is in their sleep. It's like eight in the morning. Before we left out the house, we told him that she was sleeping. That was weird to me, but then again, you couldn't tell him nothing about his grandchild. He loved his grandchild. I was thinking, you know, like maybe she was whining or something and he went to check on her, but my husband was like, she sleep okay so another time it was like my second or third day of my ex turn my baby was playing in there with him and she came out and she was just standing in the living room and I could see his shadow in the hallway like with his hand he was like 
beckoning her to come back to where he was but he would never say it out loud which was weird because if you just call her name but it was like he was silently beckoning her like he didn't want us to hear or see that he was calling her in the back where he was okay after that i don't know i think it was i wasn't even a week into my ex time when we found this out like okay he was doing little weird stuff just weird stuff and mind y'all like i said i lived with my dad my whole life he got a bunch of nieces a bunch of granddaughters everybody loved him man ain't nobody ever said nothing out the way about him no rumors he ain't never did nothing to nobody like he was just a host of fun everybody loved him like that's why i'm shocked and hurt like to this day like it still bothered me every day but anyway so one day my baby she came in there like she was still like at night she had like she was at the time still still like with the bed so she had on a pull up because it was nighttime and she was getting ready to go to bed so she lay out on the couch and she put her hand in her pull up so red flag flag on the play i don't play it why your hands in your pull up but of course i i was like babe why you got your hand right there like what's wrong where you get that from somebody did that to you i'm asking questions she was like yes so i already know when you questioning a child you do not say a name like you don't say nobody name because you know that child can just go with whatever you're saying so i'm just like somebody did that to you i didn't say no name mind you the only man in our house is my husband and my dad and it could have been a woman i got a bunch of cousins whatever it could have been a woman so my husband my dad and sometimes my brother come around but yeah at the time it was just us three in the house so i'm like somebody did that to you and she's like yeah so i don't want to say a name so i'm like okay baby who did that she was like pow pow that's what she called my dad i'm like papa you know i'm trying to get some clarity papa changed you papa what wiped you took you a bath i can't say exactly what it was that she did show me she showed me what he did and she also said something that he did and my heart just dropped like dropped i was crying so bad i told my husband my husband and my dad got into an altercation and um yeah i called my auntie my auntie lived down the street from me and i told her and she was like oh i just don't believe he did that I'm gonna say something and I'm really hoping that it's not taken the wrong way. But I can't be friends with a bad mom. And I'm not talking about regular like moms who are overwhelmed or maybe have made a mistake or anything of that nature. I'm not talking about regular mistakes that moms do. I'm talking about the neglectful moms. I'm talking about the moms that you simply just do not care about your child. You don't care about how your child goes outside. You don't care about the, your child's grades. You don't care about taking your children to school. You don't care about how you feed your children. That's what I'm talking about. And the reason why I say I can't be friends with those type of moms is because what do I look like sitting at a table with you? What do I look like bringing you around my kids and letting you be an example for them because you're around them to be honest i feel like if i can't agree with what you do as a mom then i can't be your friend because then i'm fake and i was a little worried to speak on the subject because some parents especially the ones who are bad parents immediately go into defense mode and think that you're just constantly judging them and i'm not sitting here judging anybody because hey i've made my mistakes and my daughter's only three but there are some parents who like deliberately just aren't good parents like they just should not be parents when you aren't a parent you don't realize 
certain things until you are and then when you are a parent you start realizing family the circle around you the people you hang around and everything it influences your child as well and not only that but it also influences you as a parent so imagine you got a friend right and y'all sitting at a table you're chilling you're having fun you guys are enjoying each other's companies but then you see her parent in such a bad way what do you do do you continue sitting there do you continue chilling with her do you continue to bring her around your child or how about that person shouldn't be your friend at all? Because birds of a feather flock together and that's gonna always apply. So I myself have come across that situation in some relationships I've had in my life. And guess what? We're not friends anymore. And I'm not saying I'm a perfect parent. Please don't think that I'm saying that. I'm just saying there's obvious ways that you can tell when somebody's a good parent and when somebody's a bad parent. And I don't wanna be around anybody that's a bad parent. Like that's just one of those things that I just can't be around. Like. It's like an ick for me. I, I can't do it. Okay, when it comes to parenting, it's not easy. But how you was raised is so important on how you understand things when you get older. And you have to know that when you get older, you have to learn things on your own. And sometimes the things that you've learned or you, how your parents taught you or the things that they raised you upon, you got to let some of that stuff go. Because sometimes bad parenting, they put some of the stuff that held them down on their kids and they can't see themselves going anywhere past it so they look at their kids in the same you know in the same lens but bad parenting it would never ever be commended and it starts from the home so if you have if your home is unstable don't ever expect to get anything out of that or your kids to go excel any further because of the mistakes you made as a person and expect them to have some kind of understanding raise your kids the right way and get your mom right see it's easy to have sex but it's hard to raise the right type of kids that's gonna go out into the society and be successful or be somebody leave your comments down below it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe 